So after making my uh, video the other day on the tools, I started uh, thinking I should make a list of the tools that I have in my inventory, that I have in my trailer. That's what I use for my construction. I didn't get everything, I'm just thinking, oh, there's a few other things in the garage that I missed, but we'll go with the majority of the tools that I have. Um, people wonder why contractors charge what they charge for doing jobs. One of them is what we have to buy for tools, the knowledge we have, of the codes, and how things work and how things go together. So start off with my tools list. Like I said, it's pretty much most of the stuff I have. I'm thinking I must have missed a few things, but we'll start off with hammers. I lost my 25 ounce or 28 ounce S-twin framing hammer years back, so I bought myself a stiletto framing hammer. And that stiletto cost me around $125, $129. They can go up to over $300, but that's a full titanium frame and heads, which are replaceable. You can take off the head and put a new one on for about $60. Bucks. Mine was about $125 with a wood handle. And that S-Twing that I thought I lost that I found after I bought was about $65 to $69. In the day, it was a good hammer. It's got a rubber handle, steel frame. Uh, it's a little heavier it does pound nails good but the stiletto is a lot nicer hammer to use because it's a lot lighter and easier to swing easier on the arm I do some shingling <clears throat> so I got a shingling hatchet and it's got a gauge on it you can set for the lap you want of the shingle so you can set it on one side and uh, use your hammer on the other one and it's a lot easier and a lot quicker and that was about 55 to 60 dollars I can't remember I got a drywall hammer which I picked up I lost one so I've got another one and I think that one's about 55 bucks also I got uh, miscellaneous finishing hammers uh, just multi-purpose hammer hammers a uh, small two pound sludge such I range them around 100 bucks they may be more so my hammers alone come to about 405 dollars we need saws to cut our material because no material comes in the right lengths we need so you know we may have to cut cripples or top plates or whatever so I started off with a corded reciprocating saw DeWalt I have that cost me for $185 uh, it's a good good recip saw it's a four-way you can turn the blade four different ways uh, which is which is nice it's depending on how type of space you are to get into another one is a cordless DeWalt reciprocating saw though the one I got that I showed in the video I got for free to replace that would be about 95 bucks I have a corded Makita skill saw or circular saw I had a, a 18 volt cord cordless but the batteries kind of went to pot so I got rid of that but the quarter Makita saw was about $195. Makita jig saw, which is variable speed, uh, but not orbital, it's about $79. My 10 inch craftsman uh, table saw, which I got a number of years back, craftsman's a pretty good tool, and I got good warranty. That came to about $279. I had to replace my 10 inch miter saw. I got a, a 10 inch DeWalt compound miter. It was about $259. I also bought a, a 10 inch King sliding compound miter, which I don't use for cutting finishing boards or anything. It's not quite precise enough for me. I can get 45 one way and the other way might be 43 or 47 or whatever. It's not that accurate. Straight cuts, it's fine. So I use that for doing siding and vinyl siding. That was about $189. What's a good miter stand or saw good without a miter stand? Not too much. So I bought myself a King miter saw stand. And at the time it was about $169. And that's nice. It up, stands up high and uh, gets you high enough on your work area so it's not you're not bending over. It's easy to work at. I also have two skill circular saws. 
I only listed one because I got and I got free. They're about $89 a piece. You got miscellaneous hand saws, uh, drywall saws, uh, finish saws, uh, cross cut saws, hand saws. And I figure those are about $150 I have in hand saws. So in saws, it come to about $1,690 if you're adding it up, $1,689. You know, so we're already up to two thousand, over two thousand dollars in tools, drills. We have a half-inch heavy-duty Makita uh, drill with a T-bar handle. That's about a hundred and eighty-nine dollars for that. They're expensive, but they're heavy-duty and they work very well. I have a half-inch hammer drill, which is good for uh, hammering into cement. Uh, when you got a masonry bit on and you're drilling holes for uh, anchor bolts or, or or such or putting rebar into cement to hold another cement pad to a cement base and that hammer drill would be about the one I have is hundred and nine dollars I have a 3 8 Makita corded drill sometimes you just need a cord and that 3 8 Makita corded drill come to about sixty nine dollars and sometimes it's got just a little more torque than you can get from a cord cordless drill. Now the cordless drill that I won at the show, even though I got it for free, to replace that is $279 for that kit. Expensive I know, but like I said yesterday, the cost is relevant to the amount of use you can get out of it and the amount of time you can, you can get out of it. I also have an 18 volt cordless drill set, which we've seen, with the bigger batteries. Uh, a little heavier than the batteries on the other one, uh, but it has a little less power than 20 volt. That combination of the half inch drill and, and the driver were about $219. I have one 18 volt Makita driver, and that would range about $109. And then the 18 volt. Makita drill driver combo set, if I was to buy that now, it would be about $239. Well, I was a little surprised when I started figuring out uh, what I had in tools. It was kind of surprising. So my drills alone come to $1,213. Now my uh, journeyman carpenter's pouch I have suspenders on it and a tri-square uh, holder on it. That would range about 159 maybe a little bit more because it's heavy duty leather. They're, they're quite expensive. Uh, I have a drywall pouch I use for drywalling, for screws and whatever. I also use it for doing tin work because the pockets are big and hold lots of screws. And that pouch with belt was about $69. Leather's expensive. I also have a DeWalt drill pouch. It holds your drill on your belt so when you the, don't lose it. The uh, thing I suggest there is if you're working any heights I use a, uh, a tether, tether line. Uh, parachute cable would be great. Some thin eighth inch uh, cord is good like a rope cord hook to your belt also just in case that drill drops out of the pouch long ways down 18 feet can make big damage so my drill my drill pouch drywall pouch and my journeyman pouch about 277 bucks for that my nail guns and nail staplers and air staplers and such I have a three quarter inch I mean three and a quarter inch uh, Bosch edge framing gun uh, it's good to have air tools. They have a tendency to be a little faster than the than the cordless gas ones. That would be about three hundred and forty nine dollars for a gun like that. We have a pass load three and a quarter inch cordless gas driven one. I showed the uh, Brad nailer yesterday. It runs off gas, goes into the chamber, and then when, when you pull the trigger. Uh, well, actually, when you push down on the gun, it squirts gas into the chamber. When you pull the trigger, it ignites it with a spark plug inside the uh, chamber, and like a gas engine, 
igniting it blows the nail or the finished nail into your product that gun was about five hundred and seventy nine dollars so we see a lot of this stuff isn't cheap we have a pastel of cordless brad gun which i showed yesterday that's about four hundred and sixty nine i think it maybe be a little less um, like i said that was uh, best thing since sliced bread we go into jobs and uh, sorry for the movement hands getting sore we went to jobs we don't have to carry a hose into the house for for that and with the pass load of smaller jobs we tend to use uh, the pass load framing gun uh, the cordless gun i said for prime for the uh, finish gun we have a prime air brad nailer which is sometimes if you have the space and whatever it's nice to have air a little bit more reliable that was about 169 dollars let's see mastercraft combo brad staple gun it shoots uh, uh, 5 16 crown staples uh, two and a half inch 16 gauge finished nails and 18 gauge up to two inch brad nails and that was about 189 bucks we have the uh, Hitachi roofing nailer. Hitachi is a pretty good product. Like I said, I'm not really stuck to any particular brand, but I pick up what's what's on sale or what I, I think is good good product, and I and I use it. And that came it was about 269 bucks is what I found online today. I have a busted sheathing stapler. It shoots up to two inch staples, half inch crown, and that's about 329 dollars. It makes sheeting a roof or a wall way faster. It took five or six guys nailing it by hand to keep up to one guy using a, that stapler. And of course, if you've got air tools, you have to have an air compressor. I have a 25 gallon upright standing air compressor, and that's about 299 bucks. Uh, I do have a portable one. It's about the same price, maybe a bit more. Uh, it's only about a two and a half gallon or five gallon. I don't remember what it's a uh, stackable tanks So my nail, nail guns and staplers and the air compressor came to well, 2652 bucks Other tools we ha I have or we have my son and I has drywall drywall guns for driving drywall screws It's in Milwaukee that was about $129. It's a lot easier than the hammering and it holds a little better and they're fast. Guys that are do it a lot, man, they can go, they have a handful of screws and it just continues. Bzz, bzz, bzz. A roto zip tool, which is good for cutting uh, holes in your drywall where your plugs are or openings uh, so much quicker. I find dusty. Something like that's about $79. Uh, drywall hand tools, trowels, hawks, uh, mud containers, uh, inside corner tools, uh, things like that. About 229 plus dollars. So I just threw in as a figure. T-squares. I got a couple of them. 59 plus dollars. Framing squares. I have a couple of them. About 69 dollars in framing squares. Gotta have a level. Everything's got to be square and level. So the framing square and the levels is the two most important things in framing. I got a two foot, four foot, and an 84 inch, I think it is, or 80 inch levels. And they are about 159 bucks. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I forgot a few things. I have a thickness planer in the garage. I know I didn't throw in. That's about 400. Uh, drill bits, whether it's masonry bits, uh, high speed drill bits, wood bits, auger bits, you gotta have a lot of those, there's always drill holes into something. That's about $169, I figure, in drill bits alone I have. And I should, I should carry chisels. You need chisels. Quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, the bigger the better. You never know what you gotta chisel out. I figure in chisels on the low end, sixty-nine dollars. Screwdrivers never run out enough screwdrivers. Every time uh, Canadian Tire has a sale on them, I pick up a, another one. I think I got about a hundred dollars worth of, of uh, screwdrivers. 
and uh, miscellaneous squares, tri squares, uh, combination squares. Uh, I figure about seventy-nine dollars. So, and the miscellaneous tools like that, I come to about eleven $1 hundred and forty bucks. So I told that up, it came to about seventy-three hundred and seventy-six dollars in tools. And again, like I said, I missed a few things. Thickness planer that'd be another four hundred and some bucks. I have carpet tools to buy them new would be. 25 3,000 but what I have about 1800 uh, I got stippling guns and such for doing stippling for ceilings about $129 worth of that uh, some miscellaneous other tools I figure about five about $2,429 there that brought my total of tool, approximate what I have in tools to $9,805 so I thought I was done sitting out in the porch here or on the deck and I looked over and seen my ladder. So of course you can't get on a roof without a ladder. So I got three or four ladders. Extension ladders, foldable ladders, step ladders, mini step ladder. Uh, I have drywall stilts so you know instead of walking on planks or whatever I put the stilts on and it can be another 18 to 32 inches I think it is higher. Uh, they're not ex they're cheap, not cheap I should say. Wall jacks. Oh. I, I'm going to try putting uh, pictures of most of the stuff that I'm uh, talking about here up here. But wall jacks are for jacking uh, walls up uh, that are heavy. Uh, they use a 2x4, they walk up the 2x4, and as they're walking up the 2x4, it's pulling your wall up with it, and you can stand it up. I know on one job I was showing my cousins that were helping me build a house in Alberta, uh, uh, it was a, I think a 28 foot wall or 20 foot wall, 2x6 wall. That I stood up by myself. I said, "Just stand back." So I, I put the wall jack on there, and I jacked the wall up in place by myself. And I s said, "This is to help ease our backs." Great thing. Ladder jacks. And that's you put on your ladder to make scaffolding, an inexpensive way. And mud mixers for drywall is another thing I thought of. So that brought my total up to eleven thousand three hundred and seventy dollars. A lot of money invested in tools, and I'm sure I missed quite a few. And then I have a work trailer. It's a 14 foot long uh, v, v nose on the front, which gives me another two feet. So in the center, I get up to 16 foot lengths in the trailer, seven feet wide and seven feet high. And that's what I house most of my tools in. It's, it's they're inside, under cover, and locked up. So with that trailer, it's over 7,000 now. My my trailer with all the tools in it would come to about eighteen thousand three hundred and seventy dollars so anybody wondering what it costs to get in the construction uh, carpentry framing finishing whatever uh, there's an idea of what your cost will be to get into it I know it's not cheap I enjoy it uh, my tools are bought over time so it wasn't so bad because I was working retail and I got a lot of my my uh, tools when my father and I owned a retail lumber yard here in town so I got some deals and I was always going to shows and I was picking up tools as I went. So just to, I was going to make it quick, but obviously not. It's 18 minutes so far. Uh, I hope this was informative, helped you in any way. Anybody has any questions, feel free to ask down below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Uh, if anything you'd like me to videotape, I'd be more than happy to do. So. Once again, please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'd be more than happy to, to do more information like this, inf information videos like this. Uh, I'm here to help. Uh, that's me. I, got, I, I love helping people, so if anything I can do to help you, please let me know. Once again, thank you for watching this video, and have a great day.